Hi everyone, this is Insert Blank, and this is uh, part one in a new series I'm launching called Explaining Brick Wars Drama, The Rise and Fall of the Hot Dog Boys Gang. This will be part one, which will be about the overlution, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. What I want you all to understand before we begin is that these are real events that happened to real people who at one time called each other friends. The drama may be contrived and stupid, but the real emotional core of this story is the friendships that were forged and the relationships between different brick warriors, both negative and positive. This story can only be told from my point of view, and therefore is subjective truth as I remember it and experienced it, but I was there for everything. This is the story of the rise and fall of the Hot Dog Boys gang, and how the current culture of brick wars came about. This is also the story of a man who inspired others to follow in his footsteps. A troll who played us all, made us laugh and cry, and then disappeared forever. This is the story of my friend. I met Overwatch Elite on the official Brick Wars IRC channel back in 2013 or 2014. We bonded over mutual interests and became fast friends. If you want more information on those early days, please check out the Brick Wars soaps on the forum, especially the Bjork Wars soap by Natalia. This story takes place in October 2015, and at this point, the lineup of Brick Wars trolls had been well established. As most of you know, our original goal was to troll Colette, the tyrannical admin of the IRC channel at the time. We'd been in talks with Natalia and the Shadow Scythe to oust him, but for the most part, they were ambivalent about it. However, on a whim, Scythe gave Overwatch god mod powers on the forum. This was his first mistake. The official story on the wiki reads, And lo, came the month of the Hell Hunt to the Brickverse in its 2015th reconstruction, wherein the mighty Shadow Scythe gave unto the noted anarchist Overwatch the great power of Glob Mod. With the transference of such awesome powers came the edict that he shall only use these abilities to annoy. The Goderator Natalia issued forth warnings to further regulate the flow and usage of this cosmic greatness. But more fools were they to think they could contain the wildness of Overwatch, or the ambition of his benefactor, the mysterious Insert Blank. Which is me, by the way, if you guys weren't clear. And so, in direct defiance of authority, Overwatch drew strength and purpose from the endless whining of the nostalgia-ridden, downtrodden populace and summoned a scythe of his own with which to hew the forums down to size. The other purges successive to the initial act perpetrated eons ago in BR 2010 paled in comparison, much to the general annoyance of the godlings in charge. The overlution even doubled the amount of posts flushed into oblivion by the first great purge, in some excess of 70,000 lost thoughts. But this purge, this grand electric boogaloo, this sweeping coup, was like no other in one other respect. The conspirators supplanted the chat with a new one. And this was a realm properly named. And unto this realm came the people who dwelled there for a time. And so it was that the perceived stagnation which had caused the arrogant and bloated to look upon the brickverse with disdain was torn asunder. Through some fine, though some fine threads were lost to this madness, and despair fell upon a few, new hope sprang forth in the hearts and minds of others. However, is this story true? What were the reasons that Overwatch, quote unquote, deleted the forums? And what were the circumstances that brought about this purging? Now, almost three years later, I'll explain as best I can what we were doing and why this all came about. Question 1. Why? First, I want to talk about what life was like for the so-called hot dog boys at that time. If you can understand our mindset, it may be easier to understand how all this happened. As some of you may know, I live and work in Asia, and as a result, I'm usually active online at different times than most of our American-based users. One reason Overwatch and I became such good friends was because he was often up at odd hours, which gave us many chances to talk, especially when most members on the IRC were asleep and it was just the two of us on the channel. Unlike Discord, which most people now use, IRC would not, chat, would not log chats if you were offline, so anything that we discussed when the two of us were in there alone was private from other users. This will become important later on as I explain how the plans for the Overlution took place. In autumn of 2015, 
I was working in a job I hated and where I was expected to do very little. At the same time, my girlfriend had recently moved to Japan for a semester abroad and was not around often to talk to. I turned to my friends on IRC and spent most of my time talking with them to deal with the loneliness. Likewise, Overwatch was living at home, having stopped going to school, and spent most of his time online. Without explaining too much about his personal life, I can say that the two of us were in similar mindsets at the time and had a great deal to talk about with regards to the meaninglessness we both felt and the general ennui of our daily lives. I could regale you all with stories of many hours spent in camaraderie, discussing video games and anime, or talking about our problems in our lives. At that time, for me at least, I felt I had made a friend who truly understood me and who helped me get through a very depressing part of my life. One of our favorite pastimes, as everyone should know, was trolling. At this point, we had sex successfully trolled Colette many times, most particularly with the help of Vammy IV's little sister, and it interviewed Asterios of the 1000 Minifigures fame, and no relation to the comedian by the same name, probably. It was around this time that Scythe gave Overwatch glo the global mod powers to annoy people on the forums as a joke. I can recall exactly what we were doing when he found out, and as I recall, Ninja was also in the chat with us at the time, and was generally on board with our antics. He has since joined the Robot Monkey faction, which is a topic for another video. He asked us if he should just delete everything, and we both urged him to do so. As I said before, there was no one else in the channel, so our discussion of plans to delete the forum were safe from the outside, and as a result, no logs exist anymore either. Now here's something that I think no one knew or understood at the time. Overwatch was very clear to me that he was only going to delete the subforums that didn't contain people's builds or battles that they worked hard on. What he deleted was general chat, the new people thread, announcements, administration, artwork, lesser games, metal, anime, and Thunderdome. All Brick Wars content was kept intact. So really, was anything of value lost? That's what happened, and this brings us to the question of why, which many of you have asked me. But if you think about it, Overwatch didn't delete anything of value. In later threads that I will link in the description of the video, people complained about him deleting content, which was quickly shut down by many notable members of the forum, including Red Rover, Natalia, and Stubby, and myself. I would also at this moment like to make a short clarification. Um, as you may have noticed as I was reading through the wiki, they mentioned that the coup was to, um, the reason was that we wanted to change the chat from Colette's IRC channel to a new one. And that's probably a topic for another video at another time. And while that is true, that wasn't exactly the only reason for deleting the general chat and we, Overwatch mostly just did it to be funny. I just wanted to be clear about that before we go on. This brings us to part two, the aftermath. So what happened after the Overlution? Honestly, not much. A bunch of noobs came in, as they always do, and asked to know what had happened and who this Overwatch guy was. People complained that the community was stagnating and getting filled with shit posts, forgetting that it had always kind of been like that. A lot of people drifted away for a while, but wouldn't all be assembled together again until the end of 2016 or the beginning of 2017. What I'd like to stress personally is that for all the bitching and moaning, the Overlution didn't really change anything or destroy anything, and for the most part, things have continued as usual. We switched over to Discord, and there's plenty of drama there, but at the end of the day, it's been business as usual. A lot of people are still asking what happened to Overwatch, and the short answer is that he's moved on. He found a place to call home for a while with us and our community, and he grew out of it. I talk to him sometimes, and he still has the same sense of humor and still likes to mess around, but his heart isn't in Brick Wars anymore. I can't say he's my friend anymore, and I don't know if I'd like him to be, but he was there for me at a bad time in my life, and I will always treasure the laughs we shared together and I think he will always have a special place in our community. And uh, so to conclude this video, I'd like to thank Overwatch Elite for all he did for our community and ask all of you to rethink your opinions on this individual who was friend to many and entertained us all for many years with his antics. Thank you.